Stories are really popular inside of all the social media platforms right now and we want to build a small application where we have different stories for different kind of people and then you can tap on one person and see all his stories and you also can swipe to another person and see also his stories. We start here with the user list and if we then tap on one of this user we come to his story. Therefore I have created here the story list page widget and here inside we first of all start by adding some padding and then we want to create the list view with all the users. And here inside I use this users here and here we have all the users inside and we have here exactly four. And now we create here a list style of a user avatar with this name. So I map here over all of the users and then we create here a list style. Uh, for the title we put his name inside. So this is exactly from this users model. So we have here a name, a URL of his image avatar and also all his stories. And here we have already a glance to what we later accomplish. And back in the story list page, we create here also the leading property. And here we put his circle avatar inside and use here this image URL. And I have also put here all the user images inside of our asset folder. If I hot reload this application, it looks already like this. So we have all the users. And now we want to add the functionality if we tap on one of these users and then we want to go to his story. Therefore, I add here this on tap handler and now we simply go to the story page. So I call here navigator push and put here the route inside and we want to create here a new widget, a story page and there inside we put our current user inside which we have here selected. And now we want to create here the story page where we have here a user avatar and his name and also the time and then some image object or some text object. Therefore I create here a story page and here every time comes our user inside which we have selected. And now we create here a page view and with this we have then the possibility to switch between the users. So let's say we click here on Gary, then we later can also watch Michael and John and Emma because he will simply switch after it to the next user and then we can continue watching all the stories which we have. Therefore I put here a controller inside because we want to control this switch to another user and we also initialize our controller. So I create here this initialize method and we create here a page controller and the initial page will be the page which we have clicked on. So I take here this initial page and I go over all of our users. So this is our users list which we have. Here are all our users stored. And then every time we get here the index of the user which we have clicked on and put it here inside so that he goes to the right page. The next step is to also call here this dispose message so you clean everything up. And now we can go here further to our page view and create actually the content. Then we go here over all of our users and create actually the story widget. And here inside we put our user which we have selected inside. And again we also put here the controller inside to go from one page to another page. Then we create here the story widget and we will use therefore the story view plugin and this one helps us to build the stories and that's what we want to use in this video. So basically what we are doing here is to create first of all the story view and here inside we have many properties which we want to fill now. So the first one is the items so we can build here some story items and Therefore I create here a list of all our story items and then we create here a method to actually build all the story items. And we simply go here over all of the stories of our user. And like you know, I have here created this user and we also have here all the user data inside. So we have here the users and they have every time some stories. And here we have the type of the story, the URL of this image what is showing and also some caption for example and also some date. And now we go over all of these stories of a specific user and then we go into our media type. So we have here two media types, image or text. And if it's an image, then we create here a different story item. So we create here a story item page image and this is exactly here from this plugin. 
And here you can supply many things. So you can put here the URL of this image inside and also a controller, which we want to create later. So first of all, we put here the URL of our story inside. So the story itself is every time our object here in our system and we transfer it right now to the object of this plugin, the story item. And therefore we put here also a controller inside and also the other things. So we can put here caption inside and also duration. And we do the same thing for the other one. So we have here also text and then we also create here a story items at and put here the story item text inside. And this is again from the plugin. So we can put here a title and we also can set a background color. So it looks something like this. We have then here this title and also the background color in our story. And yeah, we set here first of all the title, our caption, we set a background color. And this is every time coming from our own object and our own data, which we have stored here in our stories. And you can modify it if you like. So you can edit here the text or you can also change here the color later. And you can get the source code with the first link in the description if you want to change this. And you also can get my Flutter course with the second link in the description where I teach you how you can become a more efficient Flutter developer. The next step is to call here this add story items and also we want to create later this controller. So first of all, we initialize our stories. So I create here initialize method and put here our stories inside. And then we also want to create here this controller. So we go here to the top and create this story controller. And in our initialize method, we want to initialize this controller. Then we also dispose it here in the dispose method to clean everything up. And then we put here this controller inside. And this controller is really important because we need it first of all for the story view. And it also goes here inside of our story item page image. And we need to set it here inside. The next step is to call here this on complete method. And this is every time if a story cycle is completed, then we can go here inside. And therefore I create here a new method where we handle actually the completion. And basically what we want to do every time is we want to go here to our next page. And therefore we use here this controller, which we have wired here up. So this is our page controller. And with this, we can go actually to the next user, like I have shown you before. And then after we go here to the next page, then we also want to get the index of our current user. And we also look here if it is the last page, because it could be that we have here a user selected, for example, Emma, and this is our last user. So we don't have any stories for on the next page. And therefore we check here if it is the last page. So if we have here the last page, then we simply want to call here navigator of context.pop. So we don't want to show here any further stories. Otherwise we every time go here to the next page. All right. And we also put it here inside this handle completed method, which we have created. And then we also have here other attributes. So we have here this on story show. And here every time if a story is currently showing, then we get here this callback. The first thing what we like to do is to get the index of our story item because this callback gives us a story item and then we go over all our story items which we have put here inside and get the right index. And like you remember, we have put here all the story items inside of a list and here started at the top. And then we simply update here every time the date variable. So this is another field which I have created here at the top. And with this one, we can get every time the right date of our story. And we do this here because we need this date variable later. So like you probably remember, we have here at the top every time the user image and also its username. And then we also have here the date showing up. And therefore we will later use this date property. And then you can also do here more funny stuff. So you can create here this on vertical swipe complete. And then you can get here the direction every time if he swiped down or up. And we want to listen here if the direction is swiped down. And if that's the case, then we want to actually complete the story so that we go here away from the stories and go here back to this page again. So every time with a down gesture, you can then go back to this list. And now we are almost done. 
we also want to put here a stack around and then we create here a profile widget and we put here the user inside and also the date property which we have extracted here. And now in this profile widget we simply want to create actually this avatar. So we have here an image, the username and also the date and this is pretty simple so we create here a row and first of all we put here the circle avatar inside and put here also the user image inside. Then we have here some space between and then we want to build the username and also the date. So I put here a column inside and we align it here to the start. So we want to align it to the left side. And then we simply put here the username inside. So this is the text object with the username. And then we also have here another text object with the date. And now we could try this application out and you think maybe that everything should work right now. But if I click here right now on this one, we get first of all an exception. So we have to do here some steps before. And the first step is here in our on story show. So we want to call here the set state every time only if we have our index greater than zero, because otherwise there are some complications with the set state and build cycle. Because we have then not the first index here covered, we go to the top and then we go to our initialize method. And here after we add the stories, we add then here also the date for the first story. And then we have it covered actually. And another thing we need to do here is to wrap the story view inside of a new material widget. So we need to set it here to a material and transparency. Now we can try this application out. So I can click here on one user and the story opens up. But you see that our text is not showing here correctly. And that's what we want to change. So we go here to our profile widget. And here we wrap this here, this row also inside of this material widget and also set it to type transparency. Then if I test it right now out and click here on one person, you see that the text here at the top is fixed. And we also need to put it here more down and that's what we want to do right now. So we simply wrap here our row in our profile widget around with a new container and there we set a margin and we set it here horizontally a margin and also vertically to have some space on the left top and also on the right side. Let's try it now out. So I click here on the story and you see the avatar here at the top showing correctly at the right position. And by the way, it is also working that you can every time swipe down and then the story is closing again. And this was exactly what we have implemented here inside of our story widget with this on vertical swipe completed. So every time if we swipe down, then this is executed here. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.